welcome to the trip. We are at the MC Zoological Park in Patiala, which is more commonly known as the Chhatbir Zoo. The Chhatbir Zoo it is a large category zoo and it is spread over 500 acres. It has to this date around 1800 animals spread across 129 species of animals. As a large category zoo, it also has four mandatory posts that the central zoo authority needs it to be filled, which include one veterinarian, one education officer, one biologist and one curator. As a large category zoo, the MC Zoological Park is mandated by the Central Zoo Authority of India to have a particular functioning and a number of support staff to help it enable that functioning. The three main purposes of zoos, so to say, include conservation, research and education. The Central Zoo Authority mandates that the justification of any zoo to currently exist or any new zoo to come up is so that it can contribute to these particular reasons, to these particular functions. In the case of the MC Zoological Park, there are over 300 support staff that allow the zoo to continue functioning its numerous different enclosures, its different safari parks which include a lion safari park, a tiger safari park and a deer safari park. However, the Chhatbir Zoo is an exception and not the rule. Most other zoos in the country are suffering from overcrowding and the lack of skilled staff. There's a severe workforce crisis in Indian zoos. There are 157 recognized zoos in India, out of which only 74 have uploaded their annual reports for the year 2022 and 23. The print analyzed all 74 reports and found some glaring issues. 45 of these zoos are understaffed, meaning that they don't have all four mandatory posts of a veterinarian, a curator, an education officer and a biologist filled. 10% of these zoos don't even have a single veterinarian and 36% don't have a working health advisory committee, which is again mandated by the Central Zoo Authority. In a decade, when the Central Zoo Authority plans to revolutionize Indian zoos to become centers of conservation and research, many zoos in the country are still struggling to fulfill basic workforce requirements. Zoos in India are divided into four categories by the Central Zoo Authority. Mini, small, medium and large categories based on their size. And the requirements for staffing are also divided by the CZA based on this categorization. So while small, medium and large zoos are supposed to have all four mandatory posts, mini zoos are exempted from this. In fact, the Central Zoo Authority Recognition of Zoo Rules 2009 says that mini zoos only need to have appropriately qualified individuals available locally to run the zoo. Uh, namaste ma'am, what's your name and what's your designation? My name is Sandeep Kaur, I'm here to as a forest. और आप कौन से जू, जू की इंचार्ज है पटियाला जू पटियाला और इस जू का साइज क्या है और इस जू में टोटल कितने एनिमल्स होंगे इस जू का जो एरिया है वो 10.2 हेक्टेयर है और ये स्मॉल जू के कैटेगरी में आता है इसमें टोटल 406 एनिमल्स और वर्ल्ड और इन द 406 एनिमल्स मेनली कौन से स्पीशीज के एनिमल्स है अगर आप कोई स्पीशीज के नाम बता सकते हैं हां यहां पे रेप्टाइल है क्रोकोडाइल बाकी डियर की स्पीशीज है जैसे कि हॉक डियर वार्किंग डियर ब्लैक रॉक स्पॉटर डियर नील गाय सांबर और पार्को पाइंस ये मेंबर्स हैं 10 स्पीशीज मेंबर्स की हैं यहां पे और 16 स्पीशीज बर्ड्स की हैं जैसे कि पैराकिट जरा और इमू और ज्यादातर लवर्स कॉकटेल बगरी गर्ल स्मॉल बर्ड्स होते हैं और बटरवर्ड्स हैं Despite being a mini category zoo, the Patiala Zoo has four times the requisite number of animals for its category. With 400 animals, Patiala Zoo would technically qualify as a medium zoo, but its management and staffing remains that of a mini zoo. Uh, आप इस बीर मोतीबाग जू के बारे में थोड़ा हिस्ट्री बता सकते हैं? हाँ जी, ये जू मतलब 1968 में एस्टेब्लिश हुआ था. Uh, और uh, अब uh, 2017 में इसका नाम हियर पार्क से पटियाला जू पटियाला uh, okay. hmm. और इस uh, पटियाला जू में टोटल नंबर ऑफ वर्कर्स कितने हैं टोटल स्टाफ कितने हैं और इनके डेजिग्नेशन क्या है okay. uh, मतलब ये यू के स्टाफ की बात करें तो सबसे पहले तो हमारे डिवीजनल डीएफओ 
रीजनल फॉरेस्ट ऑफिसर जो है वो है उनके अंडर फॉरेस्ट रेंज ऑफिसर है फिर ब्लॉक फॉरेस्ट ब्लॉक ऑफिसर और फिर उसके बाद मैं आती हूँ एज ए फॉरेस्ट का फ्री इंचार्ज उसके बाद हमारे दो मल्टीपर्पज वर्कर हैं बाकी डेली वेज में टोटल सिक्सटीन जो जू में काम करते हैं वो सिक्सटीन फिफ्टीन सिक्सटीन प्लस Sanjay Shukla, member secretary of the Central Zoo Authority, has a reasoning for why mini zoos are exempted from mandatory postings. He says that since they are smaller zoos and are located in areas where qualified officials are not available readily, it would be an added burden to impose the same workforce requirements on mini zoos. But like the Patiala Zoo, there are around 10 such mini zoos that the print analyzes that are filled beyond capacity. while some like the garchumuk deer park in west bengal have around 1000 animals but they still don't have key posts like education officers veterinarians and biologists for the patiala zoo sandeep kaur performs the job of the education officer the curator and the biologist and instead of a full time veterinarian the zoo has an on call vet from a local polyclinic in the city there are definitely staffing issues with some zoos when they can't find full time veterinarians to take up the position sometimes a vet retires or leaves and then the position would be left vacant because recruitment is also a long process in most public zoos when zoos are unable to find a full time veterinarian they tie up with the local veterinary colleges and clinics for emergency procedures however Experts point to the different issues that can crop up even with on-call veterinary services. Veterinarians in most zoos learn from experience gained from their regular contact with wild animals. An on-call vet from domestic animal practice will not be able to step into the world of exotic animal practice at will. Zookeepers, biologists and veterinarians work in collaboration for proper diet formulation and an enriched life inside enclosures. Take the example of a palm civet. Taxonomically, it is classified as a carnivore, so a vet might be tempted to prescribe a meat-based diet for it. But only a wildlife biologist can tell you that actually palm civets eat a lot of fruit and need little meat in their diet. The Central Zoo Authority's vision plan for the year 2021 to 31 says that it wants to blend science and cutting-edge research to make Indian zoos forces for conservation. However, the print analysis showed that out of 74 zoos that have uploaded their reports, only 15 of them have a genuine conservation breeding program or have supported academic research in their zoos. Experts like Shubhobrit Ghosh, who is the co-author of the Indian Zoo Inquiry, explains how zoos in the 21st century must contribute to conservation and cannot just be places to hold animals captive indefinitely. Zoos originated in ancient times when royalty and aristocrats actually collected animals for pleasure and actually held them in captivity for enhancing their status so they were basically akin to stamp collections and they actually heightened the prestige of their owners however in the 21st century Zoos have a very important role to play in terms of raising awareness for conservation and education. Conservation can be carried out in zoos by breeding animals in captivity which are endangered and which can be reared in captivity and then they can be released to the wild when it is proper to do so either to actually replenish existing populations or to release captive animals in areas where they have gone extinct when the central zoo authority was established in 1992 there were over 500 zoos in india that were then evaluated rigorously and over 300 were shut down now there are 157 recognized zoos which continue to be regulated by the central zoo authority through different guidelines and the mandated requirements such as their annual reports shukla who is the member secretary of the CZA is aware of the shortcomings of indian zoos and told the print that the CZA is working on encouraging inter zoo collaboration public private partnerships and conservation education programs in its vision plan for this decade some zoos like the madras crocodile bank trust with its pioneering reptile conservation program in 1976 or the delhi zoological park which is currently having an animal adoption program are leading the way in innovation and conservation but 
unless other Indian zoos rise up to the challenge, they will remain, in the words of the Central Zoo Authority, just ad hoc animal collections for public recreation. This is Akanksha Mishra reporting for the print.